this week at Swarford Chips, well, I've got a massive smile on my face. I normally have a smile anyway, but this is such a great story. Patton Parsons in Old Breed, Black Country. It all started with this. As I said, we're at Patton Fasters in the Black Country. We've been here a few times, and every time I get a massive smile on my face because it's such a great, great story. James, thank you for having us along. We're here, well, we're here to review a Citizen Miano machine, but I want the story. When did it start? At 1981. Right, so a lot, you weren't here then, obviously. No. How long have you been here? Four years. Okay, so it started with, as we said, this part here, and what's this here? So this is a, a drilling station that is used to drill holes across the flats of screws. And so this essentially is how the company started? Yes. And the main man, John, who allegedly has retired, but we'll come to that later, he, like any good engineer, he basically built this machine, was running this machine to make these components here, and we can't get too close because trade secret, is that right? Yeah, so the machine itself, uh, simultaneously drills and deburs the part in one operation. So it's a bespoke machine which uh, was built by John and um, at one stage he was doing 50,000 parts a month uh, with this machine. 50,000 parts? Wow, one at a time, that's a lot of... Uh, yeah, I don't even do the maths on that. Right, okay, so it all started with this, it's obviously grown, we'll come next stage of the process, but how many of these have, have you made to date? Uh, we, we think the figure is around 4 million parts. 4 million parts, wow. So that's since 1980. So original part, like any good engineer, he put this all together himself. Secret operation, which we can't showcase. But next stage of the evolution of the company, let's go and have a look. James mentioned about simultaneous machining. It's not the full five axis simultaneous machining, obviously not. But it is just a great evolution. And the machine we've just panned out from, an Emimec, you don't see many of these, the old plug board machines. And it's got a bar feed on it there. I'm saying three metre? Yeah, it's taking three metre bar, yeah. Still, still in regular use? Yeah, we use it regularly, particularly for more simple parts. It, it works very well. Okay, and it dates to 90, what, what does it date back to? 1977. 1977. So I want to cover that off because these, are, as I said, are still in regular use. And engineers out there will be seeing these and it will be bringing a smile to their face, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then, a great example of the jobs you're doing on the other side, on your left here with this plug board. What are you doing with this machine here? Yeah, so th this is an E-series machine, and what we're doing is we're, we're taking a, a forged blank, which is a, basically a forged component, and we're machining it into that state there. And what operations are you actually doing on it? So, you, you've got three tools. Uh, the the, the, the front tool puts a groove in under the head. Uh, the back tool sizes the diameter and puts a chamfer on the top. And then we've got a top tool that puts a chamfer on as well. So it's multiple operations all at once, um, manually loaded. Uh, but really, old technology, it still works. Exactly. Why fix it if it's not broken? Absolutely. Absolutely. And still keeping you efficient. Actually, what we haven't done is cover off pattern fasteners. What do you actually do? We make non-standard fasteners in medium to high volume, and generally we do a lot of complex stuff that other people would like to avoid. Right, that's fair enough. And is that for the UK market or around the world? Uh, both actually, uh, so a lot of UK customers, but we export to the US, we've got customers in the Middle East, so uh, we, we really are international. There you go, it's absolutely brilliant. Now, you've got that component there, next stage. So ne next stage for that would be thread rolling and knurling. Right, which is behind us. Yes, says. so we've got machines down there which will automatically thread roll at quite a high speed and you know, produce a, a knurl on the shoulder there and a, a threaded shank. Right, and again, still, so, I mean, what do are are these date back to, these machines? Uh, the dates on these, I think the oldest thread roller we've got is uh, 1947. Um, so they're, they're varying in age, but uh, they're waterbury farrel machines. Right, so solid as a rock, not going anywhere, still yeah. holding tolerances. That's right, I mean, you, you put a, a thread on a screw in two or three seconds, um, which is 
actually quicker than most of the CNC machines will do it. <laughs> but don't tell, don't tell all the engineers out there, they'll be wanting to buy some of these off of you. Okay, so as you said, company started sort of early 80s. Yeah. How long ago did you join? Four years ago. Four years ago. And there were no, C, well I'd say CNC machines here at that time? That's right, yeah. Okay, so I think it's opportunity to say, go and look at the next stage of the evolution of pattern fasteners. What we've got behind us and around us is a great timeline of the next stage of the company's evolution since you joined. But we haven't actually got any of your background, James, because is CNC your, you know, your skill set? Well, was it your skill set? Not really. Uh, most of my skills were in uh, automation uh, to begin with and then uh, later in, uh, in the aerospace industry. Um, but I decided to venture into CNC machining and, and here I am. Okay, so first sort of toe in the water as such was the machine down there. What, what is it and why did you make that decision? So it's a Citizen L20. Um, at the time of buying a CNC machine, we, we had work that could be done by a CNC machine, but we were doing it on the older kit. We knew somebody who knew how to run CNCs, asked for some advice, did a bit of research, and we ended up buying a Citizen machine. There you go. And just to reiterate, you've never run, you've, previously you've never run a slider yourself? No, four years ago I'd never done it, no. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. So, you know, that people can change and move and adapt, absolutely. Oh yeah, okay. absolutely. So first one was an L20 second hand. How many second hand machines have you since bought? Four. So four in total and obviously very happy with them. Yeah, they still run, they all run now and um, yeah, they're great. Brilliant. So I think great timeline. We'll go to the, the next sort of stage in the evolution of the company after you obviously because of uh, guidelines. This is sort of the, the next stage. I'll come around here. So you've got your citizen machines, you've got your, well, new machines, an L20, about how long ago was that? Uh, a couple of years ago now, yeah. And then this machine? And that one in? we've had over a year, I would say. Right, okay, so L32, L20, L20, bar's getting bigger, why is that? Uh, well, we, we started with a 20, we, we then, we've sort of gone 20, 32, 20, 32, 20 and 32. And Really, it's, it's suited us quite well in terms of the variation of work we've got in size. Okay, and you've gone, I mean, this is about pattern passes definitely, but also sits and machine. You've gone the LFV technology, how has that helped you guys? Certainly with some of the harder materials, and, and particularly with plastics, uh, where you're likely to get big nests of uh, swarf, very, very good for that. I mean, you, you can take a job, a plastic job, and it'll, it will chip very easily with the LFB. Very Brilliant. good. Now, just as just we were talking about that, I heard a component drop out of here. I'm assuming you're not using LFB because I'm, I'm taking a big gamble here. Brass component, but if, I mean, is this a good example of what you manufacture? Yeah, this is a non-standard part. Um, quite a tricky one because it's tapered. It is brass, so we can machine it fairly easily. No LFB really required. Um, but it is a typical component we would make. Um, quite difficult to pick up with the sub-spindle, with it being tapered. We've got a tapered sub-spindle to pick that up, um, but yeah. So a great example of the components and how you sort of adapted. So just to reiterate, started in, essentially in a garage with a, a machine made by an engineer. You've got the four second-hand sliders, two new sliders. Yes. Next stage in evolution. Well, that's a leading question. Where did we go? Well, we went to uh, Miano b and &E 51. Why? Uh, We've got work which is large size work anyway that we've done on older machinery uh, and some of the larger size work we were subcontracting out. What we decided to do is bring a machine in, do that work in house and this machine will also allow us to do much more complex work too. Right, so in terms of, if you just want to go through there so we can get, get a look at the machine working away in the background. An example, it's making, um, is it a quick release system at the moment? for? drilling yes that's right so we're making some en24 components which are used in a quick release uh, core drilling system okay now one thing i found very interesting was the fact that it's quicker to make this than on the slider is that correct yeah this particular part is at the top end in diameter for the l32 machines that we've got and it's a fairly hard material so it's quite easy for this machine to make this part and the cycle time's quicker. Okay, and yeah, it's a, it's a lot more power. I mean, the slide head machines are great, but it's a lot more powerful. Brilliant, okay. James, it, it is a great story, 1979. So, well, start, I've still got it in my hand, starting with this part, which we've seen. 
through to parts we've got on the table. Where next? Well, I think now we've taken the step into fixed head machining. Uh, I think we'll probably do some more of that, but we may also uh, go a little bit more down the milling route with tool changing machine, that type of thing too. Brilliant. It's, again, smile on my face, just looking around the, the plug board machines, the thread rollers, everything like that, the sliders. It, it, a great, great story, it really is. Wish you, well, been very successful and wish you more, even more success in the future. James, Patton Fasteners in the Black Country, get that right. Thank you very much. And of course, as we always say, keep those spindles turning. <laughs>